Do you mean to tell me that you never took a life throughout this whole thing? Not a soul. Why would I? Do you honestly expect me to believe that? You're free to believe whatever you like. So you take full responsibility for the planning and capturing of people, but take no responsibility in directly taking their lives? More or less, yeah. That's what Ivan was for. But why draw the line there? I mean, based on everything else that you've told me, you've been involved in virtually all other aspects. Because I didn't want to lose control. To take a life, to pull somebody into the breaches of non-existence, is not a matter I considered lightly. I had no interest in going there. I knew the reasons I was in on this. Bathing in the blood of men was not one of them. I've done some horrific things, Alex. I've waded through waters, darker than most. But I'm not sure on the murderous psychopath perhaps you're looking for. Well, my reasons? Well, I wanted to see people for who they were. I wanted to see the world for what it was. Peel the scales from your eyes and you'll uncover two inescapable realities to humanity and our existence. A, people aren't good. And B, as a consequence, the world is a terrible place. Walk down our streets. This isn't exactly obvious. Why not? Well, because we've come a long way. Centuries of advancement in science, education, and technology has civilized us to a degree. But it hasn't done away with our problem. It's master problem. It taught us to bury it. Deny its very existence. Why is it, Alex, that in less developed societies, with fewer benefits and privileges, why is it decay more obvious? Why is the suffering, the corruption, the disease, the trauma, and the privation more on display? Are those places just filled with more deplorable people? What separates these people from us? I'm not sure. It's their environment. The circumstances they've been born into. You see, from a surface level, a developed society appears upright and functional. But what exactly is regulating this? Is it people's inherent goodness? Or perhaps the external influences, the established order? How can people be basically good if it's the environment around them that keeps them in check? If that's the agent of stability, the answer to that question, they're not. Take a closer look at our society, peer behind the curtains, and you'll find the rod. It's there. It just happens behind closed doors. Apply a bit of pressure. 
overthrow the order, break down the comforts of their environment, and he'll bring it all out in the open. Pull a person back into the hole they graduated from, and you'll see their true inclinations. Believe me, I've seen it. It's not something you easily forget. Hey, Angelo, how you going? I'm good, I'm good. Um, remember when I said I might need some plates run? Well, well actually, um, there's been a fair bit happening here. I think I might be onto something. People are so delusional. They think that the world is full of mostly good people with a bit of filth to boot. It's unbelievable. Oh, I'm a good person. I never do that. I'm not perfect, but I try my best. Ever notice how people judge others by their actions, but judge themselves by their intentions? What a lot of crap. Goodness. It's been watered down to nothing. Whatever justifies them in the prideful, self-worshipping existence. I'm curious, Tom. How would you define good? The abandonment of the self. An act of sacrifice. Something that costs. I wonder how anyone would be able to achieve good in the circumstances that you and Ivan forced. Exactly as I said, they will need to abandon themselves. Consider their life worthless when compared to another. So they would need to die? Yeah. Yeah, they would. How about you, Alex? How would you define good? Um... I would say that good is defined in the character of God. Does that mean humanity is incapable of being good? No. We can do good things, but that doesn't justify us as good. Interesting. Which God are you talking about? Are you a Christian? Yes, I am. So from your perspective, true goodness is found in God or Jesus Christ alone? That's right. Okay, so technically if you're a Christian, you should never justify yourself as good, separate from God or Christ? Exactly. I don't think of myself as good, but rather forgiven. And what do you mean by that? I acknowledge that I'm not good, and I seek forgiveness from God, who is. Forgiveness isn't based on what I do, but rather what Jesus, the Son of God, has done. His ultimate sacrifice on the cross. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for sin, so that we could be made right with God. So, you see forgiveness from Jesus as some sort of pathway to goodness? Forgiveness provides a fresh start, a possibility for redemption. You really think it's possible to forego our nature, to be moral? Yes, I do. But only through faith in Christ.
Hello. Hi, Amy. It's Alex. How are you? Hey, Alex. I'm good, thanks. Uh, do you have something for me? Uh, yeah. I just had... I spoke to Ben's boss, John, and there were just a few things from our conversation that'd be good to run by you. Yeah, yeah, of course. How can I help? Just, first thing, um, in relation to Ben's smoking habits. Yeah. Did, did you know if he was smoking up until his disappearance? Yeah, yeah, he was. Oh. Ben didn't know I knew. Right. So, why, why exactly are you asking this? So, so... It you, you were aware of where Ben used to go on his breaks? Sorry? D did you know about the street that Ben used to go to on his breaks? What are you talking about? According to John, Ben used to take off during his lunch breaks. What? Where did he go? Just to a quiet street, not too far from the office. So, you... You'd never been there? He never spoke of this? Well, if you think I knew, I wouldn't have mentioned it. Um, did Ben ever use a private messaging app? What? Did, did he use a private messaging app? Just something with end-to-end um, -end encryption? What, like Signal? Yeah. Yeah, he used Signal. He was big on privacy. He didn't like big tech companies extracting his data. They do that, you know. Yeah, I know. I know they do. Well, what are you suggesting, Alex? Hey. Just asking questions, Amy. Just looking for answers. Well, you're clearly suggesting something. What, you think Ben was involved with some kind of backstreet drug deal over lunch? I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm just trying to understand his routine a little better. Look, there's nothing about this in any of the documents that you gave me. From my perspective, it's a loose end. There's something I need to chase up. Okay? Thank you for your time. I'll be in touch. Bye. Bye. All right, let's change tracks here. Let's go back to the process that you followed. The circumstances that you placed your victims in. Did this ever change or was it always the new victim that was given the decision to live or die? With the exception of the first person, the new victim was always given the choice. The choice to spare their life or sacrifice it to save another. And if they chose to spare their life, what would you do with them? We held them and allowed their fate to hang in the balance of the person who followed them. Pretty straightforward. And this all just continued in a cycle. That's right. Did you ever have any trouble holding people? No, not really. Ivan took care of them. If anything came up, he'd deal with it. In what way would he deal with it? That wasn't my concern. And quite frankly, most of the time, I didn't want to know. Why is that? All right, back to me. Move!